it was March the 4th, and we'd actually just returned from a Caribbean vacation in Cuba. Um, when we left to go to Cuba, the pandemic had been kicking up in certain parts of the world. And by the time we left to come home seven days later, on March the 4th, we arrived at the, the airport in Cuba. And it seemed like the whole world had changed in seven days. Uh, every staff in the airport had, had masks on. There were numerous uh, nurses there and doctors. Uh, the ground crew, even outside, they were all wearing masks. And it was something we weren't quite used to yet, um, this whole mask idea. We weren't, uh, we weren't uh, used to that in our society yet. So um, hand sanitizer everywhere, which was kind of bizarre because we were also not a thing we were used to, especially down in Cuba. Uh, so we, we made our way back. Ash Wednesday had occurred by that point, and we were just heading into Lent. So that, uh, that following weekend, March the, the 14th, 15th, uh, it was starting to get worse by then, the pandemic, and the numbers were, were really uh, affected in church that weekend. Uh, they were asking people to be very vigilant uh, of the virus and to be careful and probably to stay home and not to go out so at that point so the numbers were quite down for that weekend uh, in church attendance and by Monday March the 16th uh, the diocese had put out a, a notice that the churches would be closed temporarily uh, to deal with the pandemic and to see where it was going and at that point we thought you know we might only be a couple of weeks or a week or so until they had it all sorted out we thought this would be you know not long-lived at all well three months later it wasn't until uh, June middle of June that we ended up opening up again but until that point it was it was a bizarre feeling not to uh, see any kind of mass happening here on the weekend For the first time in my life it was it, it was bizarre not having a mass on, on Saturday or Sunday or any other time for the week for that matter the church was completely quiet um, we'd been gearing up with the Guelph Symphony Orchestra and the university choirs to perform Mozart's Requiem here on Palm Sunday along with the Sansons Organ Symphony. And that was what had to be shelved. That, that, that wasn't gonna happen at all. So all that was canceled. Uh, Easter week, uh, here for all intents and purposes, it was canceled. We did um, put into effect an abbreviated uh, Triduum week here at the Basilica. We began to figure out that we needed to live stream or to bring the Mass to people somehow. So we recorded the Mass, we started by live streaming, and then we figured this wasn't going to end anytime soon. So I went out and got a, a few cameras and a sound recorder, and with no experience whatsoever, and a Mac computer with iMovie, we began recording Masses. and. Uh, posting them on the, the YouTube channel, which I had started back um, right after Christmas uh, of 2020, uh, so early, uh, late 2019, early 2020. I had created the channel mostly as a teaching tool um, for the choir, so we could listen to ourselves and to use that as uh, for teaching purposes and to see um, how we could improve and that, that's primarily the reason why I formed it and it ended up becoming um, the piggyback channel just to uh, post all these masses weekly so that people would at least have something to, to see or mass to attend um, via dispensation from the bishop. So as it was rough at the start uh, um, we were recording and like I say with no experience whatsoever trying to put these masses together for the people uh, the sound in this church is a very difficult thing to try and capture with the, the massive space and rec, uh, echo and reverb. So we finally, after many, many months of trying, were able to master that down. Uh, good video, videography and uh, cinematography with Jose and uh, Bob Mason helping out and uh, Julian Mason and various other people along the way. It was just a really... Um, overwhelming how people came forward and stepped up to, to, to help out to ensure we could bring the Mass to the people. Um, and as I said, we got better and better. The recording process for a Mass, we would record Mass on a Saturday afternoon, I would take it home, I would edit it, download it, um, 
make it make it look nice with the titles in, put the different angles in, and, and then upload it to YouTube. It was a six or seven hour process to get that ready for Sunday morning. So um, because we try and film everything in 4K, and then the files are just enormous, and that's what takes the time to 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 save and to edit and to upload. So. Um, we were, we were rolling with that. And then we realized that this lockdown was not going to end anytime soon. So first communions were, were, were canceled. Uh, weddings, a lot of weddings were, were shuffled around and postponed. Uh, we were only allowed five people in the church at the time. And I have to say Easter Sunday Mass being here uh, with five people in the church only uh, two lectors, myself playing the organ, Rachel singing can as Cantor, and Father Ian as a celebrant. We couldn't even have an altar server. We were just, that was, we were limited. Friday to get the, the, the amount of people in we needed to make it happen uh, a couple of us had to wait outside and uh, take our turn so there wasn't six people in here at a time so one person would leave wait outside while the other person came in and did their specific job and then we shuffled it around like that so that's that's how we, that's what we had to do that's all we could do so we got through that um, grads were cancelled as I mentioned the, the first communions which usually happen in May School did not go back after the March break. Uh, it ultimately ended up turning into summer break, and they, they were stayed off for the entire time. So in the meantime, uh, Mass had to go on, so we, we did what we could, and we were able to film and get these, uh, these Masses for the people so they'd have something to, to watch and feel like they were still part of our church community. Whereas they could watch Mass anywhere, we thought it would still be nice to bring a little slice of their home parish to them and um, that's why we thought it was important to be able to broadcast these masses from here so they can see because some of these people still haven't been back since last uh, March because of the various health reasons or, or just they're not comfortable with being here. So at least they can see and be a part of that and see their church online uh, and celebrate the mass that way. Wendy Walsh has been a longtime choir member and cantor here at the Basilica. She's also assumed the role of human resources for the choir. Here's Wendy's story. So my regular involvements here at the Basilica have me here a couple of times a week, uh, involved with the RCIA, as well as with the music ministry. Of course, we have our regular choir practice on Thursday evenings, uh, and then our Sunday Mass. And I, most weeks, would be here another time as well, um, doing another Mass as the cantor. My sister was actually in the southern part of Italy at the same time that I was down south. Uh, and when we both got back, of course, things had started to be very concerning in the northern part of Italy. Um, and there started to be more conversation here around going towards the end of February. But still, I don't think anybody was too worried. We just kind of were going on with our, our normal lives. Lent had started. Uh, the choir was beginning our preparations for the Lenten season, but also the Easter season, of course. Uh, and then that last week that we were here at Mass, when we knew that closures were probably coming, I think most of us thought that it was just going to be a couple of weeks, a little reset, just kind of stop the spread, and then we could get back to what we were regularly doing. Uh, and I think we certainly all thought that we would be back in church before Easter. Jose Reynoso was an organ student at the Basilica of Our Lady and a graduate of Our Lady of Lourdes High School, now a university. Jose has become lead cinematographer and camera person here for recording the masses and services and events here at the Basilica. 
Jose recalls his story of the lockdown and reopening. So when the lockdowns came in, in March of last year, um, it, it felt I felt kind of scared because I didn't know what was happening. But since uh, the government and everyone was saying, um, you know, it's 15 days to slow the spread, I thought the lockdown was going to be like uh, way shorter than it already that, than it is right now. And uh, but that didn't happen. And um, Online school wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but the problem is that uh, with church, all the, the things I'm involved in church, a, it was kind of my way to kind of zone out of school and kind of entertain myself and do something else other than school. And when I didn't have access to that, it, it, was, it was really hard for me to um, kind of cope with school because church was closed and... Uh, um, because everything else was closed, I, I didn't have much to do uh, other than school, and it was kind of um, um, hard to deal with school that way. So initially, um, well, at this, at this, before the, the first lockdown went, I was going to St. John's, and uh, uh, when the lockdown started, we started watching the um, mass from uh, from a uh, church in Kitchener. Uh, however, I, I I came across and, and like in the YouTube recommendations, I came across the basilica, and I was like, oh, that's good that they're uh, transmitting the mass. And so I started watching the mass um, at that time, and uh, that's that's pretty much the access that we had to, to church. And it, it was it was it was kind of sad because we couldn't be there, but it was something that that we could watch and, and you know. Uh, participate in the church. We, we, my parents and I tried to go to St. John's, uh, but we couldn't because there was a, like a the, the church is small compared to other churches uh, and to the basilica, and so we we couldn't get um, seats to go in. So we uh, the other option we had was the basilica, and so we went to the basilica, and we ended up liking it at the basilica, and so. Um, uh, my friend Joe um, asked asked if I wanted to um, to participate in recording the mass for for YouTube, and since since that is kind of the career that I'm um, that I'm taking at school, I was like, that seems like a good idea. I could get some experience for school, and and so we that's when I started recording the masses with people, and uh, well with people in the basilica. And when the second lockdown came, um, I had the privilege of still attending mass because. We, we still needed to record the Mass for the people to see at home. And so that, that was a great privilege that I got from, um, from, from that, uh, that need of me having to be here because I was, I was needed to record the, the, the Mass and I am grateful for that. As the choir had been gearing up for Easter with uh, Easter being the, one of the biggest times of the church year, if not the biggest, with all the immense amounts of music to be sung uh, for the various liturgies through Holy Week, not to mention through the season of Lent as well, and post-Easter Sunday, as, as you know, the choir keeps going. We uh, came to the understanding uh, through the various health networks and public health and guidelines from the diocese that choirs were not really a safe environment to be in performing as the virus of course as everybody knows now spread through airborne droplets and, and such and singing being one of those things where exuding all this force and you know, from, from the, the, the mouth uh, very possible to, to spread a virus if somebody was sick with this so there were numerous cases of choirs performing um, in the United States where one person was sick and and then several others became sick afterwards, so um, in the best interest of everybody, all singing had stopped, uh, it was put on hold for now. And we continued Mass with a single cantor and uh, just the organ to accompany the people. So uh, the choir ceased on March the, it was the week before, March the 7th, I believe. We uh, stopped singing and we were a little unsure of that March 14th weekend, our last weekend before we were um, shut down 
uh, we thought we'd better not, we'd just better hold off. So that was the last time this choir, the Basilica sang was March uh, 7 of 2020. In October of 2020, put together the idea that we had been, uh, I had been seeing a lot of choirs uh, making recordings of performances in a big spread out environment. And how fortunate here at the Basilica that we could spread out choir members down in the general, on the main level of the Basilica. In the pews, spaced far enough apart that it could be safe enough to have some sort of maybe uh, Christmas recording. So we decided to do um, Advent Lessons and Carols of a selected group of the Basilica Scola, just to keep the numbers down. Um, for that, for the only reason. I wish I could have included the whole choir, but in order to keep the numbers down. And at that point, the numbers weren't too, too bad in October. Uh, things were going in the right direction. Our city actually had only seven or eight active cases at the time. Um, that, of course, was to change closer to Christmas, but we, we felt it was pretty safe. If we followed the guidelines and did the spacing and everybody was far apart down below, we could, we could do a recording for Christmas. And we did. We did lessons and carols, service of lessons and carols. And the choir, uh, we, we came off not too bad as a, in a situation where we're not used to singing so far apart from each other in such a big space. Of course, there were challenges and there were a few little glitches here and there with timing and such, but when you're not standing shoulder to shoulder singing all together in time when you're spread out so far, there's a little bit of lag and things like that. So, especially with the choir being so far away from the organ. So it, it, it turned out not too bad. We, we were quite happy with it, but most of all, we were quite happy to give the people a little bit of something for the season and a little bit of hope maybe for what was coming. And then the tide tur turned to Christmas uh, in the winter months in December. November, December, the case count had started to go up and things were looking like, well, this is going to keep going on a little longer. There was no possible way we could even get together to think about doing another recording. I thought about something, preparing something maybe for Lent. But the, with the variants of concern with the virus coming out, it was just a little bit too, I think, pushing the envelope even for a distanced out uh, recording. I think it was safer at this point to just uh, hang in there and, and wait for the vaccines to start rolling out. So, uh, all in all, it's been a long period of time. It's been a year now since uh, this choir has sung together as a group. And uh, the, the, hence our, our little documentary here about rebuilding because I know there are some people that have left, some people that have moved away, some people that might not come back uh, due to comfort levels of, of you know, with, with the virus still, it's still going to be a while, but it's going to be a complete rebuilding um, structure here to get it back to where we, we were before. And I'm sure that's the case with a lot of institutes and churches and, and such like that, but we're, we're ready for it here.
in terms of being able to go to Mass, but then myself, as someone who's involved in the music ministry, so much of the way I worship is tied to what we're doing here in the choir and what I might be doing uh, down at the front at the canter stand as well. Um, so even when we were able to resume public Masses and were so grateful and felt so privileged to be able to attend Mass again, I certainly felt that it was very different and that something was missing because I wasn't able to participate with the choir in adding the musical elements to worship. Um, and it becomes very much, I don't want to say a habit, but certainly comfort and something that you come to expect as Mass, uh, both as a participant and I would imagine as well as someone who's attending Mass, just sitting down in the pews. Certainly, as we've made modifications to be able to bring Mass to as many people as possible, um, it has been a real honor and privilege to participate in some of the recorded Masses as Cantor. Certainly, however, it is still very different because when we're standing at the front, uh, I try to think of it not as a solo opportunity, but certainly as leading music. And uh, with no congregation, we had no one to lead. When, when we weren't offering public mass, uh, but we were recording for the people at home, the cantor had no one to lead. And now that we are back in mass, uh, but certainly maintaining the distance, and I know that there are still lots of concerns with singing and, and how that uh, might spread things. So not a whole lot of singing going on and certainly um, not the full congregational singing that we're used to. John Tedesco, lifelong member of the Basilica and also longtime funeral cantor and choir member. John has done hundreds and hundreds of funerals over the years as cantor and he recalls his feelings as coming back even during the lockdown to have funerals here. Well, it was interesting to me is that um, being away for so long and being stuck in your house, being able to come back for a funeral, uh, for a special occasion, when there's just few people, but you were coming home, and it was a great feeling. It was, it's a great feeling to be able to get up there and sing and uh, praise the Lord, you know. Uh, but there's, there's so many things that are uh, missing or vacant in your life when you don't have your spiritual life. And it was great to be back and to come back anytime. A vision never ever really seen before. Empty choir loft, chairs not in place, chairs put away for the time being. Choir room hasn't been used in a year now. Cubbies stand empty, chairs are empty, choir robes hanging, not to be worn for the foreseeable future. Especially now that we're in Lent, coming up to Easter again, and I think we're all wondering what Easter is going to look like this year. Uh, we certainly have hope that it's not going to be another Easter of empty churches but certainly it will be different again this year as we're just not quite through this pandemic.